Hello, welcome to my channel. Warning, this one is very upsetting. It, it, it really bothers me, so I'm guessing it might really bother you, so I don't know if you'll want to watch it or not, because it involves children. Um, so here we go. Uh, 12-year-old Rebecca West was last seen on October 21st, 1991 in Spokane, Washington. She was at a service station with her 11-year-old friend, I don't know how to pronounce that, Ariel, Nikki Wood at the time, two hours after the girls were reported missing. Nikki's body was discovered in the Seven Mile area near Riverside Station Park, located north of Spokane, underneath a pile of burning pine needles. She had been strangled to death. A man named Michael W. Tarbert admitted that he gave Rebecca and Nikki a ride home from the store, but said he had dropped them off a block from Nikki's house and had nothing to do with their disappearance. However, bloodhounds tracked Michael's scent from his cabin to where Nikki's body was discovered and also smelled the scents of Rebecca and Nikki at his cabin. Michael was arrested the day after Rebecca and Nikki went missing, but the police didn't have enough evidence to file charges against him in their cases. However, he was convicted of first-degree rape and theft after his former landlady said he sexually assaulted her and stole $400 from her purse. He was sentenced to 11 years in prison. In 1996, Michael was charged with murdering Rebecca and Nikki. In 1998, four days before his trial was about to start, he entered a no-contest plea to two counts of first-degree manslaughter and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. As of 2022, Rebecca has not been found and her case is still classified. And then it says down here, um, two months ago, it says he gets out August of this year. Is that true? Anyway, I don't know if that's true or not. And then here's another one that talks about it as well. And it has her date of birth. It says her nickname was Becky. It talks about what she was wearing. She was abducted with her friend from Spokane, Washington, October 21st, 1991. She and Nikki asked for money from Nikki's mother so they could go and purchase snacks at a convenience store in their West Gardner neighborhood. They never returned home that evening and have never been seen or heard from again. Their families reported them as missing to the police when they didn't return. Two hours after they were reported missing, the badly burnt body of Nikki Wood was discovered in a known area, seven mile area. Her body was under a pile of pine needles, burning pine needles that had been set ablaze. Um, they identified the body a couple of days later. There was no evidence of Rebecca. They haven't found her. Despite extensive searches and investigations, you think she'd be right there. Her family hoped for a bit of time that she would still alive, but no, except she's likely dead. Michael W. Tarbert was immediately named as a suspect. He admitted to being a drug addict and alcoholic, but maintained he wouldn't hurt anyone. He lived in a cabin not far from where the remains of wood were discovered and was well acquainted with her mother. He was questioned by police regarding the case but maintained his innocence and admitted to seeing the girls on the day of their abductions. Witnesses saw the two girls getting into his vehicle. He said he gave them a ride and dropped them off a block away from the house. Tarbert was staying at Wood's residence during the day of the crime. And it was the first day he had ever met West. Nikki's mother said she went to the store to get him a beer. And when she came back, the girls left with money to get snacks. And he left shortly after the girls did. The reason he was staying with them was because he was wanted for raping his 49-year-old landlady. He apparently offered to take her to the bar, but instead drove her to a secluded wooded area. He allegedly raped her and stole approximately $400 from her purse. He was arrested a day after the girls went missing for the rape. He was charged with first-degree rape and theft. He was convicted of that crime for the woman he stole from. And then it talks about the crimes. And the bloodhounds were able to trace the scents from the cabin he lived to to the spot where Wood's body would later be discovered. They also found the scents of both the girls in the cabin. 
The DNA analysis showed blood, which was found on his pants, likely came from Nikki. Two prison inmates also testified that he admitted to them that he killed the girls while he was under the influence of drugs. He later entered a no-contest plea, first-degree manslaughter. This occurred May 1998, and approximately four days before his trial. He claimed he only took the plea to avoid potential first-degree murder charges, which carried a life sentence. He maintains his innocence, but was convicted and sentenced 20 years for the murders. Rebecca was described as a kind and lovely child who was shy on the inside, but a bundle of joy. Her mother and her father were divorced at the time. Her remains have never been recovered, but she's presumed to be murdered and dead. So. And then there's Doe Network. So if anybody's found anything um, that's unidentified female somewhere, maybe. She was four foot seven and ninety five pounds. Uh, white female, twelve years old, brown, dark blonde hair. They have the X rays of the dentals available. They have the DNA available. So, and I'm not sure how much of you know which is true of which ones, but my dog's over there acting crazy. Um, but yeah. Because they all word it differently. And then here's the Charlie Project. And there's photos of the young girls. And this would be an age progression if she lived, I guess. But 4 foot 7, 90 pounds, 12 years old, black shirt, black pants, black shoes, blonde hair, brown eyes. This one says, blonde hair, brown eyes. What does the other one say? It says, brown hair, dark blonde brown eyes so her ears are pierced and this talks about it she was accompanied by her friend and elementary school classmate so yeah they found the one girl under a pile of burning pine needles only two hours after the girls disappeared she had been strangled but they couldn't find the other girl. So I don't know where he had the other girl. So I don't know if she was still alive and I don't know. I wonder if they looked in the trunk of the car. I don't know. I hate that. You feel like maybe she was alive because it was only two hours later, but where was she? And the dogs could smell the two girls' scents in the cabin. It's really sad. And then you can pause it and read it if you want to, because it's pretty much all the same thing that I've already read. He was charged. He pled no contest. He maintains his innocence. And she's never been located. So, I don't know. Hopefully they... That's really sad that they never found her body. Can you imagine the stress her parents went through? Never having closure, never knowing, hoping and hoping that she would come back to them, you know, in the nightmares. Those poor little girls, and it's so sad. Anyway, don't forget to stop and pray for their family and their loved ones. And thank you for tuning into my channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye.